TC Creo Parametric 3.0 Lesson 7, Part 2. We're going to continue to work on the same clamp arm part. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the machining machine surfaces and the holes. And so this would be called our design part. Previously, when we were working on this, we created our casting or our workpiece. So we're going to cut along the bottom and we're going to cut the two top cylindrical features flat on the top and on the bottom we're going to cut all the way across. So let's start off by <clears throat> going to the model tab and we're going to extrude and we're going to remove material and we're going to sketch on the top datum. I'm going to go into the 2D view, sketch view. And in the book, I think it's turned, so I think we'll do the same thing. Set vertical reference. Let's see. I should have just flipped it. I usually don't bother to do this, but uh, let's see, flip sketch plane, flip section orientation. There we go. Sort of like what it is in the book. I think it's the opposite of this, but this is fine. So basically, we want to take off just a tenth off the very bottom here. So we need references to start off with. So the outer edge here and the outer edge on the other side. And if we turn off our shaded, we'll be able to see that a little bit better when we pick up our references. We've got a reference on both sides here. You can see it. And we can click on solve if we want. We really don't have to do that. And we don't have to click close either. But right mouse button, line. And we're going to draw a horizontal line, locking it into the end here. You can zoom way up and just pick a point. Roll and zoom out. And zoom in again. And basically we want to make sure we don't get near the tangency point here. Just a little above. So this is one line, cut, and our dimension here is going to be 0.1. And I'm going to go into the 3D view here, control D, I'll turn on shading again, right mouse button, OK. And we can see what we're getting. So obviously we want to cut in the opposite direction, like so. And we want to go all the way through. So it'll be through all on both sides, like so. So that's our first cut. Now, <clears throat> what we want to do is have our datum plane set correctly. And we want to pass a datum plane through the new cut. We're not going to be using this front datum plane anymore because it's, as you can see, not on the bottom of the part after the cut was made. So I'm going to select that surface, and I'm going to come in and click on the plane. And this is going to be through for my option. OK. <clears throat> and that particular plane is going to be datum plane A. So with it selected, right mouse button, properties, A. And it's going to be on the datum. OK. Datum plane B is going to be down the middle of the part. We will set that next. And datum plane C, we go down the middle over here. So it's the right datum plane. OK, so we have the three datum planes that we're going to use. And the other ones we can shut off if we want. But actually, we're going to use some We're going to some, some of the datum planes we're going to use are construction datum planes. So we're going to want to keep that on. So I'm going to go back over here, and I'll turn on the plane. And I'm going to turn on the axes. Now, this first or the second cut is going to be for the upper portion here. And we want to offset a datum plane. We don't want to just cut from this surface down. If we do, we won't have a dimension left over on our drawing. So 
because we'll be we'll be actually dimensioning from the top portion here too many times down and taking off certain amount but we really want to know what the distance is from here to here so we're going to start off by going to our a datum plane and we're going to offset a datum plane to used as a cut and as i recall it's 1.55 this is the dimension for the actual 1.5. That's the distance from the bottom to the top of the arm, the machine distance. Click on OK. Now we're going to use this construction datum plane for our cut. So I'm going to deselect it, click on Extrude, Remove Material. Then I will click on the datum plane and go into 2D. I actually don't have to go into the 2D. I think I'll leave it like it is. I will go into hidden line. And basically, I need a circle for the cut, starting the origin here and locking into the outside. But I made a mistake. I forgot to, I'm going to hit middle mouse button twice. I forgot to hit references. I need this cylindrical surface as a reference. All right. So now, right mouse button circle, click in the middle, lock it in. There won't be any dimensions. And this is going to be our cut. Right mouse button, OK. It's going to cut up. And you just want to cut through all. And we'll go over and put on our shading. We'll see our cut. Now, what that allows us to do is have that dimension available when we go into a drawing. So I'm going to do that fairly quickly. I'm just going to go into a uh, file, new, drawing. OK. I don't care what size it is. And I'm going to click on the top view here, annotate. And I'm going to show the dimensions. And you can see, I'll, I'll leave them all on there for now. Here's my 1.55. So in the design process, you have an ECO and you want to change this thickness, you can do that because that dimension is available. This dimension here measures from air to air. In other words, if you see, it goes outside of the part. Let's go in here and... Uh, show and you can see you got a dimension here it's going outside the drawing outside of the model on both sides because it's been cut back so that's what we've established is the ability to put in our actual height for the drawing here on the part so we'll close that next one we have to do is this surface over here we have to cut it and there's a variety of ways that we can do it now i'm just going to do it um a quick way I'm going to click on the top, and this is not the way I actually, let's go to extrude first. I'm going to cut. This is not the way to do it, but I want to show you why it's not the way to do it. So references out here, like so. Close. And we'll go into 2D. Right mouse button circle. Click. Lock it into the outside. Right. Okay. And we're going to be cutting down. Um, I think it's 0.1. I can't remember, to be honest. Just a small portion, but that's good enough to, this is good enough to show you what's going to happen in this situation. So check. And basically you have a little burr left over. And a burr, that's called a lawsuit machinist cut his finger and they're going to sue. So you want to remove this burr by having a better methodology and design intent. So we can go back to the same method we used in the very first one. Extrude, remove material, select the datum pane, plane to um, sketch on. I'll turn it. You don't have to turn it. Zoom way in. 
and I'm going to click on references. I want the outer edge as a reference, but I don't want this here as a reference. I want maybe out here. I could also put a distance. So this is now a reference, and the other side over here is now a reference. All right, so I'm going to put in my line sketch. And zoom. if I zoom up, it's easier for me to get close to the position I want. And I'm going to come all the way over, and I'm just going to lock it into the angled rib. It's just to control the cut. That's all that's doing. There are a variety of ways you can do it. You can write a relationship. You can hook it to something else. Now, the main thing here is we need a dimension. And the dimension that we need is for the bottom of the part. Careful not to hit the datum plane down here. You're going to actually go to the bottom of the actual cut. It's datum plane A. And to the top here, the little mouse button. And 0.75 is the size, as I recall. 725. You do want that to be correct. And you can see it's just trimming off a little bit below where the round is. Check. Let's go back over to our shading. We want to have through all. You don't want to do symmetric and then stick it way out. The size could change, and then the cut may not be correct after that. So by doing through all, no matter how big this portion here changes, it'll always have the cut through it. And now, if you check here, you'll see no burr, no lawsuit. All right. Next thing is let's put in the holes. Those are machine surfaces also. So machine features. So let's turn off the datum plane. We don't need that. The datum planes that stay on are the set ones. And it looks like I made a mistake on this one. What did I do with this front? Why is it showing up? A, B, no, nope, it's there. OK, there's A. All right. So let's go and uh, select the hole tool. I'm going to pick on the axes first, hold down my control key, select where the hole is going to start. This is going to be a through hole. And I think it's 0.5325. And it has a chamfer at both ends. So we'll worry about the chamfer later. Through all, check. Now. It's still selected. Control C, Control V from the keyboard. Go and select on the axis over here. Hold down your Control key, select the surface. You can see what's happening. But this time, we're going to use the standard hole. It's going to be a half an inch. We're going to have a countersink. And it's through all. And then we go to the shape. And let's go down and take a look at the size for the shape. Because I actually changed the standard size a little bit when we put this in. So it looks like it's uh, 0.5625. And we want to have an exit countersink also. And that's the same thing. It's a through thread. And everything else is standard. We'll leave it alone. Check. And next, let's go over and select any of the features over here. Move your cursor, select the edge. Put your Hold on your control key, move your cursor down to the bottom. You'll see it, it'll, it'll find it through the model. You can also rotate it, of course. Hold down your control key, though. 
and we're going to chamfer those also. And I'll just leave what, what is there. I'm, I'm sure that looks a little too big, but that's okay for now. Control D. Make sure you've saved the part. And that is the machined features. This concludes lesson seven, part two.